in multimedia networking, um, basically we are going to talk about how to do audio and video. So there are three protocols for that, uh, for those RTSP, RTP and SIP and that's what we are going to do. Basically those three protocols for audio and video. So what is a multimedia? Multimedia is, could be either stored or live. Stored means like movies they could be streamed or live is always have to be streamed or you know uh, and so if it is stored then you can do back you can do rewind fast forward and so on so forth but if it is live just such as in a, t in a video conferencing then you cannot do I mean you cannot do um, rewind the reason you cannot do rewind is because if you do rewind you will lose something whatever is coming ahead so anyway so there are two kinds, live and stored. And if it is stored, then you can um, decide when to play. So when you get something from YouTube, it doesn't start right up front. It starts to buffer some things. Once it has buffered enough, then it starts because once it starts, it doesn't want to stop in the middle, right? So it buffers enough depending upon the delay and delay variation, and then it starts getting out. So that is called the play out delay. That is called the, del that is called the play out buffer. Alright, so high data rate to small number, large number of users and generally the video and audio is multicast. Although it can be P2P but mostly it is multicast and therefore we use the delay jitter control by caching. So the data is stored just like we said in the play out buffer and we will have example of the play out buffer. And um, and so the same thing is used for internet telephony, voice conferencing and so on and so forth. In general, the guideline for the telephony is that the delay should be less than 400 milliseconds. If it is more than 400 milliseconds, then you get interruptions. In the sense that if I am speaking and if it takes more than 400 milliseconds, you would, um, I mean, people will not, I mean, wait, less than they, after every sentence, so the delay is more than 400 milliseconds, then it sounds bad, like satellite net. Some of you might have seen the satellite um, connections. If you get on a telephone on a satellite, then somebody says something and you listen to it, and um, and then you know basically you might inter you might collide with them in the sense that it is taking so long for their voice to come to you when they are finished, and then you say again your question. Yeah, I have a question about both. Okay, what does multicast mean? Multicast means that if I want to send the same message to certain number of people, many people, then I do multicast. For example, if, um, let's say this is a big city and I want to give a lecture over wireless, by max, whatever it is, and only these people want to listen to my lecture, other people want to listen to some other lectures, so I may multicast mine to the class of 473 at Vashu whereas somebody may give another lecture at the same time and multicast to class of 571 and watch you. But how do we get it? So everybody has to join the multicast. Basically, and there are so many multicasts going on right now on the internet and then you could say to your router that I want to join a multicast which is destined to this address, like multicast address. And then the router will look for those messages and send it to you. It might ask its other router that, okay, we are looking for any messages going to this multicast address. And they might tell you other and so on and so forth. And so finally, whole multicast tree is made. So there's a multicast routing. Yeah. In fact, the multicast routing is explained in your book. We did not cover it in the routing chapter. We skipped that section again because there's a lot of things which are covered in the book which we cannot cover in one semester. So multicast, if you're interested, you can read that section in routing chapter. <laughs> all right. <coughs> so on the internet, the problem is, first of all, we have best effort service. Best effort means some things will make it, something will not make it, no guarantees. TCP cannot be used because if you have to retransmit, the packet may take 15 retransmissions and that might be too late. So we cannot use TCP. And another thing about the multimedia is that if you lose something, 
people can make it out, no big deal. Suppose data is coming to you, a check from your bank, and they lose a zero out of it, would you like it? No. So, uh, if they add it, it's okay, but taking it out is bad, right? If I'm the payee. But on the voice, if they are sending out a voice and they lost a letter of symbol, a syllable, you know, nobody cares. Right? Our eyes and ears are very forgiving. In fact, eyes are very forgiving. Ears are a little bit less forgiving. So the sound has to be good quality. But the video can be very poor quality. In fact, all the video that you are watching today is very poor quality. I mean, YouTube is really bad quality, right? And you know that, right? Because otherwise you don't go to movies, theaters. And so that is really good quality. So, <laughs> so, so the, on the internet, the, uh, the, the, we, can, we, can, we can have packet loss, we can have bit loss actually. And packet jitter is smooth by buffering. So the delay is not guaranteed, but the way we guarantee it by buffering enough beforehand. And we really need some guarantees on the throughput delay and the jitter. So if you want to design a real technology, then you would say, well, I want a minimum of 10 megabits on my network path. I want the delay jitter to be less than that or, or, or not be plus minus one millisecond. And this is all done with ATM, but didn't succeed, so it's all gone. So now we are stuck with IP, which only gives you soft guarantee. Soft guarantee means at best, you know, you just get what you are going to get with a high quality, with high probability, but not guarantees. Protocol for bandwidth reservation and traffic description. So what we have done on IP is we have developed new protocols, and we'll talk about them. Actually, we are not going to talk about them. Um, that you can send a message saying that I want 10 megabits. Okay? And if the router understand that, this protocol is called RSVP, and we are not going to talk about RSVP in this course. So you can send a message which reserves the bandwidth for you. So protocol for bandwidth reservation and traffic description, and you can say I want to send audio over it. Is scheduling to honor bandwidth reservation, and then the routers will schedule your packet so that you are guaranteed your 10 megabits, you get it. High bandwidth, and you need really high bandwidth for that, and content distribution networks are not come So because of that, what we have done is we have now content distribution networks, CDN. Akamai, how many people know Akamai? Anybody heard of it? Okay, Akamai is a company what they do is they go to every other company that wants to send video or audio or and actually nothing to do with the audio video any web page they will store it at 1500 places in the world so your users can get that web page very short time and very fast from local copy that's all they do they keep they do caching on the internet they have lots of servers in lots of places and if you are a business who wants to give very fast response to your users you give your data to them they are all proxy servers, yeah. And actually, they, they basically, I mean, you know, the web page, I mean, I, I, having said that, I feel a little bit wrong here because the data originally does not stay right there. The data is cached by them, and when you go and you get it, they, they are really the original server now in this case. I mean, you know, so the main problem is what happens if the data changes. And the idea is that the data doesn't change. The data, if it changes, you give them the process that changes the data. So that's why some people cannot use it. For example, banks cannot use it because the your know, balance is changing every second, and and uh, so they will not give it to you. But some things don't change. For example, YouTube videos don't change. They can easily be put on Akamai, right? So if it is a static data, it can be it can be put on Akamai Content Distribution Network. What is the delay jitter? Good question. So if I, my delay is five seconds, so you can buffer five seconds and you are done, right? But if the delay is sometimes four, sometimes six, sometimes three, that variation is called the jitter, okay? So you need to know the delay and you need to know the jitter because play out cannot be with jitter. Play out has to be continuous and smooth. So you really have to estimate both. What is the mean and what is the standard deviation? If you want to understand that way, right? Jitter has to do with the standard deviation, the variation. Yeah. So the reason that when you're watching a video, sometimes it catches up, it doesn't buffer up, is because they underestimate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, both audio and video are compressed. What compression means? Generally, it is a lossy compression. They throw out some bits right at the front, at the source. 
All right. When we speak, the telephone company did a test when they started digital voice. Then they, they asked people to speak and then they digitized it and they found that most people are okay with 8 bits per um, 8 bits um, um, encoding per um, 8 bits um, per hertz and um, and everybody is happy with 4 kilohertz sorry first they find, find out how many kilohertz they need for people to speak to understand at 4 kilohertz people were happy all right 4 kilohertz is good for voice but not good for music you know if you hear music at 4 kilohertz it will sound very bad but it will sound more like my voice but if you hear 28 kilobits then it will sound like some real nice singer or something so so you really want to so the the heart is differentiate of what quality it is right so they decided that 4 kilohertz audio is good enough and if you sample that at twice the rate which means 800 samples per second and each sample is 8 bits you get 64 kilobits so that is the standard telephone voice 64 kilobits and that's what the telephone company was sending up until the cell phones came around. When the cell phones came around, they said 64 kilobit is too much. We can't give you 64 kilobit. We will give you 4 kilobits. How about 4 kilobits? So that's what you are getting on the cell phone. Sometimes you can figure out what the other guy is saying, and sometimes you can't figure out what they are saying. You're getting 4 kilobits. So how do they get from 64 to 4? They compress the voice. And there are many standards for compression. And... Um, the standard, one number you should always remember, and this one I remember, and, you, and anybody who does anything with multimedia has to remember, G.711. 711. Is there a store like that? I forget. So, <laughs> G.711 is the standard compression means no compression. Basically, 64 kilobit voice. Isn't that so compressed? Isn't that so yeah, this is, so you, when you get a voice, the other side will say, I'm going to send you G.711. You say, fine. That means there is no compression. All right? If they say, I'm going to send you G.729, they're going to take that and convert into 8 kilobits, 23, 64 kilobits, and so on and so forth. All right? So I can't remember the other G numbers, but G.711 we remember. Okay? Now, cell phones... GSM cell phone used 30, 13 kilobits, that is the older one, the newer ones even go to 5 kilobits, all right. CDs, which are where you need the music, music use um, 700 kilobits, mono and 1.4 megabit stereo, all right. So now you understand the compression that if you really want to do good quality, this is what you need, but you are not going to get that not on the cell phone. So you get few kilobits. All right. I'm going to stop right there. And next time when we come, we will talk about the video compression standard, which you already already heard, MPEG one, two, and four, and then continue from there.